Okay, seventh grade, lesson three. This one is on missing numbers in addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So we gotta cover four different levels, okay? <clears throat> now, this is an equation, okay? Pretty simple, normal. But eventually, in the beginning of algebra, you're gonna start to see letters. It can be any letter, A, B, all the way to Z, um, and they all just mean what is that answer. So when you see a letter, they're wanting to know what the answer is, okay? So let's talk about missing numbers in addition. Well, this one is a normal problem that we're used to. Three plus four equals what? We're, nor we're used to answering um, the problems when we know need to know the sum, okay? But a lot of times we're gonna get problems like that or problems like that where the A or the Z or whatever letter is in the add-end. Do you remember the add-ends when we talked about add-ends? Add-end plus add-end equals sum. So when we have a missing add-end, basically let's take this problem right here, okay? If we have a missing add-end, basically what you're gonna do is take the numbers that you do have and you'll subtract them. So if you have a missing add-end, what you're gonna do is always subtract to get your answer. 7 minus 3 is 4. So we know that 4 is A. 4 plus 3 is 7. We know that we've gotten it right. Let's look at the bottom one. A plus 4 equals 7. Okay? Again, if you have a missing add-end, you're always going to subtract. You might want to write that down on your paper. Always subtract when there's a missing add-end. Okay, so we're gonna go with the numbers that we do have. We have a seven and a four, so we'll subtract seven minus four and we will get three. Let's put three back into the problem and does that work? Three plus four equals seven? Yes. Therefore, we know that we've done it right, okay? But let's say you forget the rule that you always subtract when you have a missing add-end. Here's what you're gonna do. Okay, let's say it was A plus 3 equals 7. Okay, always look at the biggest number. Okay, the biggest number is 7. Now, I'm going to ask myself, do I need a smaller number than 7 to go here or a bigger number? Well, if I have a smaller number than 7, 3 or 4, maybe 2, and we add 3 to it, it's likely going to equal 7. But if I go over 7, like a 9 or a 10, 10 plus 3 will not equal, it's going to be too big. So we need a smaller number, and to get smaller, we always subtract. So that's just another rule if you want to use. Um, I always look at the biggest number, and then I ask myself if I need bigger or smaller in the letter portion. Okay, and that always helps me. So I know to go seven minus three, and that equals four, so A would be four, okay? Now, let's talk about a missing number in subtraction. Now this is, gets a little bit more difficult, okay? So let's say it's N minus five equals, what, 12? Sure. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm asking, what number is going to go here? All right, now, I'm going to do a common sense rule first before we talk about the actual rule. Okay, remember to look at the biggest number. I have a 12 there, okay? Do I need a bigger number here to then take away 5 to get 12? Or do I need a smaller number here and then take away 5 to get 12? Bigger. I need bigger. And in order to get a bigger, what, do I minus or, sub, um, minus or add? Add. Add. Okay, so whenever you're looking at these, you're either going to add or subtract to get your answer because the inverse operation of subtraction is adding. Okay, and we kind of talked about that the other day. Okay, so we are going to add to get the bigger answer. So 12 plus 5 is 17. So is 17 minus 5 12? Yes we know that we have gotten it right, okay? And so I would always take the answer that you think it's gonna be, put it back into the problem where the letter is, check it, and you'll know whether you've gotten it right or not, okay? But the rule for that one is, is if you have a missing, 
menu end, then you add the other two numbers. To find a missing subtrahend, then we subtract. That can kind of get difficult to remember, okay? Now, let's try another one where there's a missing subtrahend. 5 minus n equals 2. Okay, so the first time we had a missing menu end, this time we're going to have a missing subtrahend. Okay, before we get to the rule, let's look at our biggest number. Five is my biggest number. Okay, am I going to need a bigger number than five here or a smaller number than five here to get the answer to? Smaller. Smaller. So to get a smaller number, we subtract. Five minus two. Five minus two is three. Let's put that back in there. Five minus three equals two. We know we've gotten it right. But if you want to know the rule for the missing subtrahend, then the rule is if there is a missing subtrahend, you subtract to get the answer. Okay? That's the rule, but sometimes we cannot remember them. All right. Now, let's talk about missing numbers in multiplication. All right? So, we've done adding, we've done subtracting, and now we're doing multiplication. All right? Multiplication um, is kind of like adding in a sense. And what I mean by that is... Um, there is a factor times a factor equals the product, just like there's an add-end plus an add-end equals the sum, okay? And so, if you want to write down rules, if there is a missing factor, you will always divide, okay? Um, let's do, okay, missing factor always divide. Okay, the opposite of multiplication is dividing. So, we will do the inverse operation, which is dividing. Now, so if I divided this, I would take 30 divided by 5 and get 6 as my answer. But let's say you forgot the rule to always divide when you're working with missing factors. What you're going to do is you're going to ask yourself, remember, look at your biggest um, look at your biggest number and you ask yourself, do I need a smaller number here or a bigger number here to get my answer? Well, if we had a bigger number than 30 and then we multiply that by 5, it's going to get huge. Okay? It will not equal 30. So we need a smaller number than 30 to then multiply by 5 to get 30. So, let's, to get smaller, you're always going to divide, which is the opposite of multiply. To multiply gets bigger, to divide gets smaller. So we would divide and get 6 as our answer. We put 6 in there, we know that the answer is 30, we've gotten it right. But, let's say there was a missing um, factor on the other side, then let's see, n times 7 equals 28. Now these are easy problems to do because we know the answer what times 7 equals 28. But let's pretend like we didn't. In order to get this, okay, I'm going to ask myself, do I need a smaller or bigger number than 28? Then to then multiply by 7, I'm going to need smaller. So 28 divided by 7 is 4. 4 times 7, 28. Okay? And then the last one is division. Missing numbers in division. <clears throat> this one gets a little bit harder too. It's kind of like subtraction. You never know if you're going to add or subtract to get your answer. With division, you never know if you're going to add or multiply or divide. Okay? So, let's try this. Um... You're used to working with problems like this, where there is a missing quotient. We know how to answer that, 5 times 6 is 30, okay? But, let's say you had a missing mm, dividend, okay? So that would look like this. We don't know what that is, but we know that 5, I'm sorry, yeah, okay? So we, we, um, we don't know what the missing dividend is, Okay, and so let me draw this number like this. I'm going to put n divided by 5 equals 6. Now stay with me. What divided by 5 equals 6? Okay, again, you're going to look at your biggest number. 6 is my biggest. Am I going to need something bigger than 6 or smaller than 6? Well, if I take something bigger than 6 and then divide it by 5, there's a chance I'll get the number 6. But if I take something smaller than 6, like a 3, 3 divided by 5 will not give me 6. So I need bigger. And bigger, you multiply. The opposite of divide is multiply. 
to get smaller, you divide. So we want bigger. So six times five is, we're gonna take the numbers we do have in the problem, six and five, and multiply them to get 30. So I know that the answer is 30 divided by five, which is six. You got it? Okay, but if you're wanting to know the rules, let's just write those down real quick, okay? If we were going to be finding, let me find the one that they said. If we have a missing, you might wanna write these down, missing dividend, which is the one on the inside, dividend. I think I talked about that last time. This is the divisor and this is the quotient, okay? If we have a missing dividend, then we multiply to get the answer. If we have a missing divisor, which is the one out here, then what we are going to do is, let me find that part, we're going to divide. So that kind of divide, that kind of makes sense that when you have a missing divisor, you are going to divide, okay? And dividend, you're gonna multiply. Um, but again, you can use the rule where you look at the biggest number and then ask yourself if you're looking for something bigger in the letter area or something smaller, wherever, whether it's an A or a Z or an N or whatever. All right, mm -hmm. that is lesson three. If this lesson um, doesn't make sense and you're needing um, a little bit more understanding, I went into way more detail. And if you just wanna go to sixth grade, go into my Podorf Math um, channel and type in sixth grade lesson three, and that will be the adding and subtracting lesson um, when you have missing numbers. And then lesson four will be the multiplying and dividing and it goes into great detail on those. Um, I just kind of reviewed since it was a more of a review.